All right, 4.33 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. This is the Court of Public Opinion, the Rick Roberts Show. Coming up, your chance to win $1,000. Just text the national keyword when you hear it. We'll text you back to confirm your entry. Uh, so good luck with that coming up in just a bit. You know, be to try and gauge how far we have fallen in this grand experiment known as the United States of America, you really have to know how it was created. Now, we don't teach that as we once, once did uh, for that very reason, that compare and contrast can can work against you if you're an aggressive, heavy-handed, overreaching government. You know, you can't miss what you know didn't know you had in the, to begin with. That seems to be the mantra. So let's look at it for a second. You know, to say that the Founding Fathers had a difficult job is an understatement. understatement. The delegates knew they had to find a way to work together so that we could be one united nation, right? And they knew that they needed one leader who would represent the entire country. But how could they be sure that this leader would not get too much power? You know, many of the delegates were extremely afraid of giving a central government too much power because they believed it would be no different than having a king, and they had already experienced that. They didn't want it again. Some of the states at that time were extremely small, didn't have many people at all. Should they have the same voice in making laws for the country as the large states with more people? What if the laws were made, but then we found out they weren't good for everyone in the country? Who would decide if the laws were fair for everyone? So they spent months and months and months crammed together, arguing and debating and pretty heated arguments if you want to get into it. Finally, they came up with a plan. They called it the Constitution. It was decided decided at that time the central government. Remember I told you we call it the federal government. Back then they called it the central government. It should be broken up into three parts, that each of the parts would have equal power. Those three parts sometimes are called branches because like the branches of a tree, they all work together. The three parts or branches would be called the executive, legislative, and judicial. Now, most of you, I assume, already know this. Many you would be surprised to learn do not. The executive branch would be the leadership branch. That would include one leader who would be called the president. He would be helped by the vice president. The president would also have a group of advisors called his cabinet. The president and vice president would be elected by the people of the country, and the president would choose the advisors he or she wanted in the cabinet. The president, of course, if he's married, would have a first lady, and they'd live in the White House. The legislative branch would be the lawmaking branch. The legislators would be elected by the people of the state they represented. Okay? That branch is divided into two parts, called the Senate and the House of Representatives. All the lawmakers are called to Congress, if you want to give an umbrella name to them. They meet in D.C. The Founding Fathers finally solved the problem of how to be fair to both the big states and the small states by coming to what is called the Great Compromise. In the Senate, each state is represented by two senators. So nowadays, we've got a hundred of them. And each has an equal vote when making or approving new laws. In the House of Representatives, each state has a number of representatives depending upon how many people live in the state. So a state with a lot of people, like New York or California, have a lot of representatives. A state with a small number of people, you know, like uh, Rhode Island, would have only a few representatives. Any laws that are made must be approved by both parts of Congress, the Senate, and the House of Representatives. That'll kind of give you an idea of why so many people are upset about the census question in California. California is afraid if you uh, are not a citizen, you won't answer it. Therefore, they'll be shortchanged on the number of people. Therefore, they may lose some representatives. All right. There's that whole news headline in one sentence. The judicial branch is the third branch. 
the part of the government that has the final say on whether a law is fair to all the people. The leaders of that branch are called the justices, nine of them, on the Supreme Court. The, uh, the justice who has served the longest is appointed the chief justice. They meet in, in the Supreme Court in D.C., which is often called the highest court in the land. Any American citizen has the right to question a law, but cases must pass through a ton of lower courts at a state level, before being presented to the Supreme Court. So, the Founding Fathers also decided that certain laws would be decided by only the states. Now, this is important, because this is this line's gotten pretty blurry here of late. They decided that certain laws would be decided only by the states, others would be decided only by the federal, or what they called, central government. For example... Only the federal government can declare war on another country. Your individual state can't. But states have the right to decide other things like uh, as the way public schools in each state would run. The state leaders uh, like the way the Constitution divided the powers uh, among the three branches. So each state also has its own executive, legislative, and judicial branch. They like that three-branch system, right? Uh, yeah, and the head, <laughs> yes, you're ahead of me now. Each state has an executive branch leader called a governor. Each state has its own lawmaking branch, and each state has its own system of courts. That, in a nutshell, would be enough, I think, to get the interest of most students to figure out, okay, well, I can compare what's going on at a federal level with what's going on at a state level. Do you see what I'm saying? The founders weren't stupid. They weren't stupid. And and for those history revisionists that say, well, they could never, like on the Second Amendment, you know, they had muskets back then. They could never have envisioned AR-15. It doesn't matter. The principle is still the same. All right? So, so forget that. It doesn't make any sense. But you you've got to send, you know, it's very, it's very easy to express an opinion or, or put forth the truth, the truth of a thing. No matter how you, you filter it, it's still the truth. But people have to know what you're talking about to begin with. Otherwise, you first must educate and then alliterate. You know, there are some topics that come across um, my console here. Oh, yeah, I really love that. Well, Wait. You know, it is so convoluted and abstract in many ways, and not in the public domain, you would have to instruct before you gave an opinion or solicited one. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why education is so important. And I know many of you take me to task when I say if my kids were school age, I would pull them from the public education system in a heartbeat. But that's part of the reason why. The federal government should have no role in educating my kid. Whether it's common core, outcome-based education, or any other nonsensical thing that comes down the pike from the federal government. I don't, that's not education. That's socializing. That's the bottom line. All right. Uh, let me uh, step aside very quickly. Let's check your afternoon drive You know, the 18-wheelers have been doing pretty good here lately, except in the rain. Except in the rain. I won't go off on you guys on that, but just, you know, tell each other. Form a single line so at least we can see to get around, all right? Don't have to worry about the day. It's a beautiful day out. Uh, We'll check your afternoon drive. And your chance to win $1,000 is coming up, so stick around for that. 4.43 the time. I'm Rick Roberts. Your call straight ahead. 